There's an evil that is called rape. An evil that is called rape. I didn't know how serious the issue of rape really is until 2005 when I met a lady full of life, happy, playful, and we got talking and she had to open up about that aspect of her life to me. She wept so much that day. And from that moment, I just kept meeting a lot of women who have been raped. And it's a, it's a terrible tale. Uh, the perpetrators of this act don't know the destruction that they put on the lives of people that they do these things to. You know, so as I met different women narrating their experiences, I felt that I need to do something about it. Now, I'm not a social commentator. I'm a preacher of the Word of God. And so I can't do beyond what the Word of God teaches. So for me, um, I intend to address this issue by looking at God's Word. Now, that does not in any way say that whatever law the society have and so on are not good. Um, it's just that I'm looking at it strictly from the angle of the scripture. What exactly does God think about it? So, what I came up with is this book, What God Thinks About Rape, which is available um, on Amazon. Uh, you may want to check. Maybe I'll leave... Um, the link uh, in the tagline so that if you're interested you can pick a copy on Amazon so I'm not going to review the book uh, or simply teach what as in, what is in the book all I want to do is just to raise our consciousness to this evil and share one or two things about the script that the scripture says on rape now you know, for me to um, write the book, I needed to have a definition of rape. Uh, and I noticed that if we don't get the definition of rape right, we may not even know what constitutes a rape. So what I have done is to define rape like this. An act of forcing, manipulating, deceiving a man or a woman, a boy or girl, to have sexual intercourse, or be engaged in sexual activities willingly or against his or her will. Can you understand that, definition, that definition? It it looks into a whole lot of issue. It's an act of forcing, so it could be by force. Manipulating, you can actually manipulate somebody to the point where the person even willingly have sex with you, but it's a manipulation or deceive. You can you can poison or drug someone's uh, food, drink, and so on in order to put them in a state where you could easily have sex with them. It could be uh, against a boy, against a girl, you know. Uh, there has been an incident of a man being raped. And in the scripture, we have an attempted rape on a man, Joseph and Potiphar's wife. That's it. That's an attempted rape. If she was able to overpower Joseph physically, she would have overpowered Joseph, you know. But I know that most of this rape, most of this evil is done to women. Unfortunately, most of these men do not know the consequence of what they are doing on their own soul. You know, there's a story that I heard of a of a um, a young man, you know, who seized a young girl's school bag, and then asked her to come and take the bag in his house. And the the young lady, uh, so naive, just went to pick the bag, and this guy overpowered her, this virgin raped her violently. The girl came out with blood stained, and the community came up to to really beat this guy up. But before they could get there, he ran away. Years later, he was involved in an accident, and it was his private part 
that was crushed in that accident and he died instantly. I heard he was the only one who died instantly in that crash. So I want to quickly share a few things from the scripture. Do you know that I discovered in the Bible that every single person who perpetrated rape ended terribly. Every single person without an exception. Guess what? The first people that are raped in the scripture are actually two women. The daughters, um, the daughters of Lot. They were the ones that raped their father. And how did they do it? They simply, they simply drug their father. They simply make him, uh, they made him drunk and then they took turn to sleep with their father. And then they produce uh, a, a, a tribe that later constituted into a problem for the nation of Israel before they were able to annihilate them. So that the product of that sinful sexual behavior it later on became a problem, but they were eventually annihilated. Now, other cases of rape in the scripture, the, the, the one of the famous one is Amnon, who raped Tamar, uh, his half-sister. And, you know, <laughs> for like two, three years after that rape incident, nothing happened. It looked as if he got away with it. It looked like, oh, as they say, we are in a man's world. And then he got away with it. Guess what? God is a God of justice. Eventually, he was killed. Why? Because of that rape. He lost his life. He lost his dignity because of few minutes of pleasure. He got destroyed. The man that killed him or that arranged him to be killed, Absalom, himself actually raped his father's concubine. In fact, he raped them openly. And guess what happened to Absalom? He was also killed. In fact, he was suspended on the tree and he died terribly. There, there are, we, we, we also have the case of uh, the Dina, the daughter of, of, um, of Jacob, who was also raped. She was raped violently. Guess what? They were killed. Those who raped Dina were also violently killed. So I, as I, it, it's, I, I just said this couldn't be a coincidence that everyone who engaged in rape died very terrible death. Every single one from the scripture. You know, it, it tells you that God greatly um, hates this. You see, as a man, God gives you strength in order to protect, to nourish women. It is not to oppress. It is not to be violent towards women. It's only a foolish man that will use his strength to oppress women. That is not what God gave us strength for as a man. The woman was taken out of the man. She is part of the body. That's why I challenge every young man that if you are in any place and a lady is being raped and you are there and you can't go out to fight and defend that lady, you are not a man. You are a very wicked person. You must rise up. And I want to say to you, if you are watching this video and you have raped somebody before, you are in for you are in for a difficult time. You are in for a difficult time. You've got to repent. If you don't repent, you won't end well. I'm not cursing you. That's the precedence that I found in the scripture. That's the precedent. It is evil. If you are watching this video and you are contemplating it, please don't contemplate it. Don't try it. You literally kill these women alive. Can you imagine if somebody will violently rape your own daughter just because of a few minutes of pleasure? What are you going to gain? It's wickedness. 
And let me tell you something. God defends the weak. You may think you had gone away with it. It will find you out. Your sin will always find you out. You can't get away with it. You can't get away with it. You have been warned. You can't get away with it. Now, you see... I need to speak to those people who have been raped. You see, as terrible as this may have been to you, let me say something to you. It should not affect your future. It should not affect your life. You know why? Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to heal the broken hearted. You see, Jesus didn't just come to save us from sins. It's a total package. He came also to heal any brokenness in our life. Jesus is the only one who is able to heal you. I know people may recommend psychology to you. and so You don't need all of that. All you need is Jesus. He's able to heal you. He's able to defend you. He's able to fight for you. And I want to say to you, learn to forgive. You see, the scripture says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. You see, vengeance is not yours. Learn to forgive. That's your own part. Learn to, you see, you are forgiving, not because you're a fool. You're forgiving for your own sake. Particularly, if you're a child of God and you are born again, you have to forgive. There's nothing anyone do to us that's greater than whatever we ourselves we have done to Jesus. And if in his mercy he forgave us, do you know how many people are heading to hell every day? But you have found salvation. Be grateful. Extend that forgiveness to others. You see, let, let it be God who administer justice, not you. When you don't forgive, it also affects you, not that person in the immediate. It's you that is being affected. Because Jesus said, if you don't forgive others what they have done to you, he himself is not going to forgive you. I know this may sound hard, but it's true and it's the word of God. You need to forgive whatever anyone may have done to you now you see i must add that you know because when we talk about rape often we look at just the violent aspect of rape there are many forms of rape if as 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 is as a lecturer because a student failed and you now said i've got to sleep with you to pass and she comes and you sleep with her you've raped her that's what you've done you've raped her if because you want to give a lady job and you have to sleep with her, you've raped her. Now, somebody might say, well, she should, she could walk away. It's true. It's true. She's also responsible for not walking away. But that doesn't excuse the fact that you also, you have been wicked. Or when you force someone to perform sexual activity, it does not necessarily have to be raped. Even by touching a woman, without her consent just because she's with you or she's in a weak position with you you begin to touch her breast you begin to touch her body it is wickedness you are raping her you are manipulating her god frowns at it my brother do you think that you can hold pin a lady down and force her against her will and you think God is going to fold his arm and watch you and then you just go on with your life it doesn't work that way I, I didn't see it in the scripture and do you know something for everyone who raped in the scripture they didn't just die they died terrible death you know at times we hear some death you don't even know the reason you may even feel empathy Oh, how could somebody have gone through this? And you may not have known what has transpired secretly in the life of that person. 
Some of you will have to write letters. Some of you will have to physically go and apologize and, and show true remorse and regret for what you have done. But you see, I'm also using this to warn young men, young women, because I've seen instances where women are even part of the plot to rape another woman. So I'm using this also to warn you, desist from this wicked act. The arm of the law may not catch up with you. Many societies do not have laws strong enough to deal with um, rape perpetrators. And because evidence is also at times difficult to come by, they get away with it. But I'm saying that you may beat the human system. You can't beat heaven's system. You can't beat God's system. You can't. It's wickedness. You can't. You can't get away with it. God will not allow you to get away with it. God will not. You know? Now, I, I, I also know that there are other, even men have suffered certain things. I know a lot of, a lot of men, young men, that when they were young, they had women, you know, who will... Uh, elderly women who will put them on them and press them and so on. I know this has happened to uh, some of my some of my friends. It has even happened to me. You know, but I I thank God that may not be as as difficult to deal with as a woman that had been violently raped. You need to understand. You, you need to understand the wickedness. As a man, let, let, me, let me illustrate something to you. Just imagine, you know that somebody takes a bone that is full of sharp edges and dip it into your throat and violently put it in and out of your throat. That's what you do when you violently rape women. You see, the, the body of a woman is not... A, a, a body that is ready for sex by default. If a woman's body is not ready for sex, sex can be extremely painful. Moreover, what joy do you derive in forcing someone into sex? Do you know this, that one thing God doesn't do which he can do is that he does not violate the will of a man. God wants us to willingly serve him. God doesn't violate our will. What you do when you rape is that you violate the will of another person. You are doing even what God does not attempt to do. That's what you do. You see, that's the wickedness of this sin. You are doing things that even God will not do to man. To violate the will of a man. That's why we all have will. That's why we can do whatever we like. The only thing is that we are not free from the consequence of the choice we make with our will. But we have the will to make that choice. So when you force a woman, you are being you are you are doing something that even God will not attempt to do. I also must say, you know, because you know, when 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 rape cases happen, it enrages it, it, it arranges us and we, we get emotional. But I want to warn believers that see you are committing abortion. But you are condemning somebody who has raped. You have hatred in your heart. You are lying. You are fornicating. You are an adulterer. Let me tell you. Repent of your sin. Okay? Repent of your sin. 
What's the difference between somebody who commits abortion and somebody who, who rapes? There's no difference. You are both murderers. You are both killers. In other words, I'm saying that it's not just rape that you must not do. You must cease from sinful life. You must cease from sin. Sin will take you further than you plan to go. Sin leads men to destruction. The destination of a sinful life is called destruction. And that's the lake of fire. Repent today. Now, like I said, there's no way I can address this issue in a video. I'm just raising our consciousness and particularly to warn those who may fall into this trap and to let anyone who may have done this, who may think, oh, I've done it and I'm getting away with it, that you don't get away with it. That's why I've made this video. But if you now want to understand the whole biblical perspective on rape, you may want you may want to get a, a copy of this um, a copy of this book. What God uh, thinks about rape, you know. I wish that I could actually teach the whole thing on on YouTube so that everyone can can watch. But that may not be practical. You know, so if you want, you can get a copy. I'll try and leave um, a link on the video where you can get a copy of this book. It is my prayer that, you see, for everyone who has suffered from rape, the Lord will heal you. The Lord will comfort you. I want to say to you, it is the lie of the devil that tells you that when you face challenge in your life, it's because of your past. It's a lie. Whatever anybody may have done to you will not make you to become an immoral person. Will not make your life to now become impossible. It's a lie. With Christ, all things are possible. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Jesus has come to heal your heart, to heal your wound. He knows your pain. He was there. He saw it when it happened. If there's anybody who understands it, it, it's the person who was there when it happened. And that's Jesus. You will fulfill all that God planned for you to fulfill. You remember Rahab the Harlot. Up to today, we still call her Rahab the Harlot. She was hopeless. But today, she's among the heroes of faith. Her past sexual sinful life did not stop her from becoming heroes of faith when she believed in the Lord. How much more that it was just something someone did to you. It can't stop you. God is not unjust to mess up your life because of some people's wickedness. No, God will straighten your life. God will lift you. God will guide you. You will be successful in life. But I pray that you will find grace for forgiveness and that the peace of God will comfort your heart. You know, there are people that even while they were raped, they were even filmed and their pictures were taken and they were uploaded. Don't, don't, um, because of that, you know, the devil will suggest to people and say, take your own life. What then do you stand for? May I say to you, your integrity it's not in your nakedness being covered. Your integrity is with God. Your integrity is not what we men think about you. Your integrity is with God. You see, when, when we die, our body, people who don't even know us may be the one who will bathe and take care of our dead body. It is, that is not, it is not this body. There's, that the real you is on the inside. This body is just a temporary clothing for us. Don't let that dissuade you. Stay strong. With God, you will succeed. Once again, my name is Olushe Gumopolu. You may want to write me. My email address is BibleLoveHelper at gmail.com. God bless you.